Hey guys, um, sorry I couldn't be there for the Cranger Skull this morning. I had a meeting and this is the best thing I could come up with to get you the information and get the points for your uh, um, for your scores. So hopefully this will work. I'll have a couple minutes for your test to actually answer questions. So here it goes. Um, Dalton. We spent a lot of time talking about Dalton and Dalton's atomic theory. He was the first one to put it together. Um, and it was really, really good. Okay, but we found a few mistakes in it. And when we found a few mistakes, we came up with the modern atomic theory. But what's important to remember is that we did not throw out Dalton's. Okay, his was, for the most part, correct. Instead, we simply expanded and modified Dalton's atomic theory. Uh, the two things that we've changed on it is first we found that um, that atoms of the same element can have different masses, okay, um, and if they do it's because they're isotopes. They have different numbers of neutrons. So that's the first big difference. Atoms of the same element may have different masses. Uh, the second thing we found out is that um, atoms are divisible into smaller parts, okay. We found subatomic particles. Um, so those are the two differences, but again, we didn't throw them away. Still a good dude. Um, we simply expanded and modified what he originally said. Um, we talked about a couple experiments. There's two important ones on this test. Uh, the first one were the cathode rays. Okay, so when they were experimenting with cathode rays, uh, they discovered the electron. As they discovered the electron, they used different types of metals, they used different gases, and they found out over and over and over again, they continued to shoot these negative um, rays out, these negative particles, and not only did they discover the electron, but they discovered every metal and every gas they used had electrons in them, and therefore everything contained electrons. Um, the next one we talked about was Rutherford. He shot the gold uh, foil with the alpha particles. Um, Hopefully I don't get in trouble for that. But he shot those. Um, and at first he thought he was kind of reinforcing the plum pudding model. But it surprised him what happened. While most of the alpha particles went straight through, almost all of them went straight through, a few of them bounced back. And when they bounced back and they were shooting positive charges, he knew that they must have been repelled by densely packed regions of positive charge. Okay, so he knew there was something in there, teeny tiny, but it was very dense and it was positively charged and it was causing those to bounce back. He also theorized that since most of the alpha particles went straight through, most of an atom was empty space. Uh, matter of fact, almost all of the volume of an atom is occupied by that electron shell and empty space. So the big volume is the electrons, almost no of the mass, none of the mass, excuse me. The nucleus itself is teeny tiny, so it's very little of the volume, but it's almost all of the mass of the atom. Um, all atoms, if they're the same element, are going to tend to have the same atomic numbers because they have the same uh, number of protons. Um, a, a, a proton and neutrons are both in the nucleus and combined, the protons and neutrons make the mass number, okay, or the atomic mass. Um, the number of protons is the atomic number. Uh, a nuclear particle that has about the same mass of proton, but with no electrical charge, that's a neutron. And an electron is an opposite charge of a proton, but it is one two thousandth the mass of a proton. We could also say it's one two thousandth the mass of a hydrogen atom, since basically a hydrogen atom is nothing but a proton itself. Um, atoms are electrically neutral because they have the same number of protons and electrons and that makes them neutral. Uh, do, 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 do. If I had something say that had 13 protons, 13 electrons, and 14 neutrons, its atomic number would be 13, 13 protons, 13 elect electrons, 14 neutrons, right? So the number of protons is atomic number, 13. Its mass number would be 27. 13 protons, 14 neutrons equals 27. Um, we talked about uh, the number of atoms of, of any substance in a mole, right? The number of uh, particles in any mole of a pure substance, and that's called Avogadro's constant. 
Just like avocado, it's Avogadro's constant, the number of particles in any mole of a pure substance. And the number for it is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. You have to know that number. Uh, we got tired of talking really big numbers all the time, or really tiny numbers, so we started using AMUs, and the way we did AMUs was we compared everything to the mass of a carbon-12 atom. Okay, so it was one twelfth the mass of a carbon-12 atom. And the last two things we talked about, which were uh, really difficult, were the law of multiple proportions and the law of direct proportion. The law of direct proportion isn't too bad. It deals with one compound, okay, NaCl is what I've used all the time, and it says whether it's small or big, it's always going to be the same ratio of elements by mass. In other words, it's going to be 40% Na, 60% Cl, whether I have a little or a lot. But definite proportion only talks about one compound. <coughs> the law of multiple proportion talks about numerous compounds, but all with the same two elements. For example, N2O, NO, NO2, N2O3, right? They're all different compounds with the same two elements. And what it says is that the atoms have to combine in small whole number ratios. So that is the law of multiple proportions. It has multiple compounds, so it's multiple proportions. Uh, hopefully this gets you through the test. I think it will. And uh, good luck to you guys. Thank you very much.